Oh no. Billy Goat. Billy Goat. Good morning, y'all. Good morning. We're all in our faces with bright, shiny faces. Yes, sir. Oh, never mind. We're just all in our places. I don't know anything about bright, shiny faces. Have you looked in the mirror lately? Yes, that's why I changed my mind real quick. Uh, then I can see myself on that. Y'all ought to have to be up here. Yeah, well, never mind. Y'all got it. Y'all get it. I have to look at it myself, too, I guess. I'm sorry. I apologize to y'all. Do we have any prayer requests while we're at it? Yeah. Wow. Hands go up. You know, you know what? I, I've, I've been around some of y'all the last few days. God, God spared Pasadena, Deer Park, Baytown, and everything in between. It was that's like you know what that's a, that's a, that's an outright miracle. Yes. I mean it, it is, yeah. and it, as close as that thing passed to this church, yeah. and didn't do a thing to it, not a thing. Yeah. Some y'all must be doing something right. Okay. Well, I'm just I'm just amazed of all the damage in all the places and no, no major injuries. That's just, and it's the attitude of everybody. That house on the corner of the well and X that's demolished. Today she has her little Dalmatians that she puts out at Christmas. She has her little Dalmatians yeah. out in the yard behind the chain link fence because her Dalmatians were home and they were not. But their Dalmatians were not home. Yeah, it's just, it's just amazing that. That was Christmas. Yeah. Do what? It was Christmas. That's his house. Yeah. 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 Um, so if you, I mean, I have not been around the city. I, we, I've seen some of Center Street. Uh, we were up here, was it Thursday, Brad? Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So we put teams together to go out and work, and Brad and I drove down towards uh, Angie's, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. And the devastation, I can tell you what I saw. You go down towards Angie's house, Angie's at the corner of X and Shoshone, and uh, it's like it's like those it's like that tornado just took a little hopscotch, skip a jump, yep. and just demolished six or seven. I mean, when yep. I say demolished to the ground, mm -hmm. yep. about five or six houses. And when he got to that last house before it got down towards Angie, it took a left. <laughs> so and then it went that away. Um, and and the comments and I said the thing same thing, and I heard it from other people. We might be used to hurricanes, but we're not used to that. Yeah. That's like destruction. I know I've heard a reporter say, I just don't understand, you know, you warned them a week ago that there's a possibility. How did they weren't ready more prepared? I went, I didn't prepare for it. The fact, the simple fact, the simple fact that, the simple fact that nobody got hurt is a testament to the fact that you were warned ahead of time. That's the only thing you can pre prepare for. That's all you can do. Get yourself covered up. They had a deal on the news and it showed there's been four EF2 or better tornadoes in this part of Texas and they all ran down the same corridor. Not not exactly, but the same corridor of southeast Texas. It started in about, all four of them started about the same spot and all went in about the same direction. That must have been a long time ago. Well, there's been four of them in the past, I forget how many years they oh, gave it to you. It was a long time. I don't, I don't remember anything doing with that thing. Yeah, so it's, 1977 was the one of them that came. And it tore Deer Park up? Yeah, it went down the uh, Camelview area. It went down Shelter Road. Okay. okay. You just got to gotta remember yeah. all of the force of a hurricane with a tornado, all of the force of a hurricane is located in that tail of that tornado. So anything it touches. So if it happened in 77, I don't, I'd only been out of high school for six years, and I didn't pay attention to nothing about that time, except her. So, uh... Yeah, the U-Haul on Red Bluff. Red Bluff, I mean, one year, years ago. They did what? 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 I got a, a, a buddy of mine show me a picture of that turn. It was right in front of him. They were coming down 225 when it took that 18 wheeler and picked it up. Anyway, anyhow. 
we'll run through these real quick. I just want to say thanks for praying for Lori. She's doing really well. Oh, also, Cedar went well, so hopefully she'll just pass all the right. little pieces. <laughs> yes, yeah. good. We're going to pray now, and then I'll do these. Go ahead. Good. Well, we can pray now. We just take that one. Oh, okay. Um, Danny, why don't you pray for all the folks in Pasadena, Deer Park, and Baytown. And thank the Lord for sparing us like you did. Did you hear Father, we come here today. Thank you so much for this time we had to come here and fellowship one another, Father, and, and, and worship and glorify you, Father. And we want to thank you, Father, for the things that we've been through this past week, Father, as a, as, as a group of cities in this <coughs> county, Father, we thank you so much for the protection that you put out on the people, Father. All this damage, this force of nature thing that happened, Father, uh, you know, we need to respect that put it in its proper place, Father, but the, the amazing thing, Father, that no one was damaged. We want to thank you so much, Father, that no one was injured and hurt uh, that could have, you know, what could have happened, Father. And, uh, you know, your grace was shown, but, uh, the, you know, the force was shown, but the, the mercy was there, Father. And that's, that's, that's a blessing and it's a symbol, Father. And I want to thank you for, for your grace. Lord, I ask you to bless this service today and watch over uh, the pastors messages and all the teachers, Father, that are being brought today, Father, ask that your honor and glory would uh, be bestowed upon us, Father, that to, as we worship, the Holy Spirit would be here with us, Father, and that we would all receive the blessing that you would receive all the honor. I ask all these things in the name of what Jesus Christ in You know, we also need to, uh, I think, think that Wednesday night, there was a large crowd there. I pray that it's a Drawing back to the church. Amen. Amen. Um, Sunday, 6 p.m. video series will continue tonight. Tonight is How Great Is Our God. Very pertinent and proper considering what we just went through this week. Uh, February the 5th will be Evolution versus God. <coughs> Men's Breakfast is this coming up Wednesday at 6 30. Be there or be square. The Garms Family uh, free concert it will be Thursday, February the 2nd at 6.30. The ordination of Jay Pope as deacon and Steve Hines as elder will be Wednesday, February the 8th at 6.30 p.m. in the sanctuary. It would be, be nice if we had a good turnout for that. That's right. Super Bowl Sunday, Church versus Hunger, February the 12th. All non-perishable food items. There's goalposts set up in the foyer. <coughs> All of that will be donated to Deer Park Food Pantry. Um, right after the morning service on February the 12th, we'll be having a fellowship in the fellowship hall. Just bring finger foods if, you, if you're so inclined, just to have, so we can have a little bit of fellowship after that. Recharge Escape 2023 uh, is for students 6th through 12th grades. It'll be February the 17th through the 19th at Piney Woods Camp in Woodlake, Texas. $150 per student. You can sign them up online. Prayer and Praise Service, Sunday, February the 19th at 6 o'clock. Singspirations coming up again on Sunday, February the 26th at 6 p.m. if you want to test your pipes. Get with Pastor Kaler. What day is that? Uh, February 26th, we won't be here. Billy, mm -hmm. February 26th, do you sign up for St. Yeah, hold your breath. No, I'm not going to. <laughs> be, be looking like Mark's shirt about that color blue. <laughs> that probably blue. wouldn't make it that long. Yeah. But anyway, if you're interested in singing St. Inspiration, just get with Pastor Kaler and he'll get you lined up. <coughs> Church work day, Saturday, March the 4th at 9 a.m. We're going to be working on the landscaping. Sunday, March Sunday, March the 5th at 6 p.m. Spring King. It's early in the morning. Yes, it is. Spring cleaning slash special projects. I'm not sure exactly what that is, but it's special projects. So if you're, if you're brave enough to show up for that. That should be a Sunday night, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sunday, uh, we, March the 5th at 6 p.m. Yeah, we, we do that. I mean, we'll get in here and everybody, big teams, and we'll go around <laughs> cleaning things up, straightening things up, putting stuff up, fellowshipping. 
picking on each other. That's fellowship. Yeah, absolutely. And just everybody remember to help welcome Jeff Green to our church staff. He is uh, joining us as a children's director. Part-time job, but he is part of the staff. So everybody just go by and pat him on the back and welcome him on board and thank him for his service. So uh, when, Brad, when Brad said that, it, it, put, it made me think about something from way back when. And if, if, if we're paying attention... All the, all the things that we thought that we needed and which was most, most of what we thought that we needed is appropriate. But I hope that we're paying attention and the Lord is beginning, the Lord has and is continuing to provide all those things that we thought we needed several years ago. Whether it was from kids coming to church or getting a children's director. That's been a need for a long, long time. And it's, and it's because... God's using people in this, the people in this church, to make us a way to take care of the things that need to be taken care of, and that's what we're supposed to do, right? That's how He gets things done through us. Amen. Amen. Um, did we, Danny? Okay, I, I just want to say thank you, God, for all your help. Thank you for everything that you do. You are very welcome. One of, one other thing, one of the other things that I heard somebody say, I didn't hear it. Y'all, maybe y'all have. Um, there was a reporter. Just the long and short of it was they were he, they were completely kind of in awe of the way people come out of their houses as soon as it was over with and started helping each other. And he would I don't know where he's from, but he wasn't used to that. Welcome to Texas, dude. <laughs> it was amazing. It was, I mean, I, it did not surprise me, but it was just amazing to see. It just, everybody walked out and went, okay, well, <laughs> that's over, here we go. Take a deep breath. Is everybody there? Are you okay? Yeah, if you're okay, you need anything, you need, it was just. And then for God provided the sun for everybody to get out yeah. and, cool, was, and cool weather. And cool weather. Mm -hmm. It was just like, he said, okay, here's your storm, and here's your peace. It was awesome. I'm, I'm, here's what I allowed and here's what I did. Yeah. And this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to tell you what, we've, uh, we've got a, a, a good group of people in this church. Amen. And preachers shared a story and, and, and that group of guys that was out cleaning up, there was a limb that needed to come down and there was some bartering done with tree services over how much it would charge to take something down. And when the bartering was all said and done and the price was decided on, every man in that group reached in their back pocket and started whipping out money and paid to have it done. That just don't happen very often. <clears throat> so just a test is it's a testament to me of, of the people that we have in this church well, and the Lord love they have for each other. Only the Lord can do. Amen. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. I believe you. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we skipped, and I thought about this sometime or another by the end of the day last Sunday. One of the top, and, and we're going to get to the lesson. Uh, one of the topics that was mentioned in last week's le lesson, does God him, this could be a trick question, and I'm, the way I understand it, I, I'm, I'm going I'm to pull a brother on. The way I understand it, and I may be wrong, but does, does, can, can God and do, does God personally, key word, tempt us? What you say, Becky? No, he don't know how to do that. No, that's it's not, not, it's that's not, not God. God. Does he allow us to be tempted? Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> I need it. I need it, man. Because that's that's a learning thing. Yeah, because how you react to it shows our faith. So, so brother, brother Brad, blah, 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 that's right. Yeah, brother that's Brad and I this morning for for old folks. Well, I'm, older, I'm older than he is. Uh, anyhow. I, I looked, 
Danny's a little bit too young. He's, he hadn't been in our study group as long as some of us have been there. And Billy, Billy knows exactly. He, he's probably going to go, yeah, not that again. <laughs> we spent a long time in our Bible study group, and I'm not sure that we're through yet. We're not. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about the Holy Spirit. If you want to learn to the point of just falling out of your chair about the Holy Spirit, get Brother Ron and let him sit down with you when he's got plenty of time because it's going to take a long time. But for whatever reason, and I didn't have a chance to get with Brad last night about, about verses. So I need to read some verses that have, that have a lot, a lot, a lot to do with the lesson but if, if you look at the lesson, it, it talks, and, and most of the lesson is telling me to look back at other places. Like, why didn't you just put it in, the, why didn't you just start at, in <clears throat> chapter 2 of Acts and go start with verse 1? Because you can't do the lesson without starting at verse 1. If you really want to know the truth based on what I think, based on how I feel about it, you can't really explain chapter 2 unless you go, go look at the book of John. So, Billy, if you, uh, I tell you what, I changed my mind. Real quick, like, because I can actually, I can't see Cowboy over there. He's hiding pretty good. And Kim's mad because she usually hides behind that post. <laughs> Kim, if you look at Mark 8, 31, and then uh, Billy, if you read John, John 14, 16 and 17 and 26. Danny, if you want to get John, and I, it's 16, 7 and 8, I'll give you a minute. John, Danny, John 16, 7 and 8, and 13 and 14. 13 and 14 are my, they come in the category, I don't, they, they're, I, they are some of my favorite less, uh, verses. As I said, some of them. Because there's, a, I have a lot of them now. Um, so, Golly. Um, Y'all got all those verses? Yeah. Just hang tight. You Les, you want, you want to read those verses up there, please? This Jesus that God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses, therefore being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus, who you have, ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. So if that house of Israel... There's two or three things that it could be talking about right there, but mostly it's talking about, you remember Jacob's name was renamed to be Israel? That's, a, that's pretty much the talking about where you see Christ down there, anointed one, Messiah. You want to pop the next ones up there? Beth, can you read those? Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said unto them, Repent. He baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sin, and then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So I want you to keep in mind what it says right there. Now when they had when they had heard this, they were pricked in their heart. Just remember that. Next was this is it, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Michelle, uh, Michelle. Melissa, can you read those? For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they gladly received this word and were baptized. And the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Les, would you look up Acts? Uh, two. I'm just going to tell you one through six. I might tell you to keep going. I might tell you to stop. Okay. So there's something going on here. All right. And the something that's going on is 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 Peter's 
Peter has preached, okay, on the day of Pentecost. That's Acts 2. But my mind told me this morning when I was looking at stuff, if, you, if you've studied and read the scriptures and pick any of the gospels, I've made this comment. I've heard other people make this comment. Jesus told them more than once that he was going to be crucified. He told them exactly what was going to happen. They're going to crucify me. They're going to bury me. And on the, on the third day, I'm going to rise. Billy, who did I give it? 8 to 831. Or 8, whatever. Yeah, 831 Mark. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things, and be rejected of the elders, and of the chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. So there's Mark. Mark's telling, Jesus is telling them exactly what's going to happen. I'm pretty sure, I didn't look, but I'm pretty sure you can find that in some of the other Gospels. So he's telling them this is what's going to happen. Now, I've said this to mo most of y'all have been with me for, for so long that y'all have heard me say this, and I'm, I'm not so much, I, I'm not worried about it anymore because I, I almost said I had a complete understanding. I don't completely understand it nothing. Um, I have a little bit better understanding. If you, if you look in Acts, for me, when I first started teaching, I didn't want to go there, okay? So, um, who did I give, who did I give the verses John 14? 16, 17, and 26. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that you may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world, receive, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for, ye dwell, for he dwelleth in you, and shall be in you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Is somewhere right before that or after that he's telling him that he's got to go? No, that's in the earlier part of the chapter. In, in, in 16, 17, and in 16? Yeah. yeah, 7, 8. Okay, hold on, hold on Billy. So, Mark's told us, he, he, Mark's, Jesus told us in Mark exactly what was going to happen. Now we hear, and, and I, I love it, uh, you know, I completely understand, uh, there it is again, for myself, I understand this. I understand the Holy Spirit comes, he, he comes and is called many things. He has many names. But those verses says he's the comforter. <coughs> the comforter, the counselor, the teacher, whomever. He is the part of the Trinity. Is anyone, anyone one of those more important than the other? Yes, because they're all the same. I mean, I, I, I finally figured it out and got in my head. If you want to pray to the Holy Spirit, good. That's not a bad thing. Because Jesus said he's the comforter. He's the counselor. One of the verses says he's going to show you all things. Okay? But what, we, what, what I wanted out of those verses was is we know, we know what's going to happen to him, and he's telling them now, don't worry. I won't, if you read all of I would tell y'all that if you want sheer um, grace of understanding, read John chapter 14 and John chapter 16 and all of y'all if you want to. But those are some great verses. It gives you full understanding who the Holy Spirit is and what his ministry, uh, what his job is, what he does for us, what we should be looking for and how he corrects us and straightens us up and, and tempts us when we need, oh, I'd be saying God tempts us. He's the one that gets us through those temptations. Um, whoever I guess 16, uh, 7 and 8 to. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come, uh, come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So I want, I want you to think back 
to that one verse where it says they were pricked in their heart. Who's doing the pricking? The Holy Spirit. That's, that's what he does. He, he's the one that, that I, I can only try to ma imagine a little bit. I would assure you, um, I was oblivious. I heard that tornado, but it did not affect us at all. It, well, you know what? That's not true because it affected it, it affected the church family, so it affected me. Um, most of all y'all, I know. I, I'm pretty sure when it come close and it looked bad, I bet there's a lot of people praying. I got it. And, and even if it did even if it didn't come close, there was a lot of people praying. Did you hear Joe up at your house? <laughs> I heard some things, but I didn't hear that. I, 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 guess, I, I guess what I'm trying to say. Uh, did I give somebody Acts 1 through 6 or something like that last? Would you, would you, hold on. Hold on. I'm sorry. Six, uh, 16, and then now we need 13 and 14, Danny. Mm -hmm. Did I give you those? Yes. How be it, or nevertheless, uh, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatever he shall hear, uh, that shall he speak. <laughs> And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. What's, what is the Holy Spirit's job? Main job? Convict us. To glorify God. And then he then he gets after in, in this convicting that I'm talking that Brad just said he convicts us. Well this convicting it can, occur, it can occur to the point of view to your salvation and then it will convict you he will convict you every time I do something stupid you think about what happened at Pentecost the Holy Spirit came down came on all, all of the disciples and it was like he came down and said okay I'm here it's time to go to work uh, Acts 2 1-6 through 6. and when the day of Pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord Which verse is that? Six? That's six. Yeah. yeah. Did y'all hear that real good? Mm -hmm. What else you got? Well, no, it's just, I was just going to, I guess, basically say that. He did, he came down, the whole sequence of events was the Holy Spirit coming down and going to work. The fact that the thousands of people that were there all heard the same message in their own tongue. The Holy Spirit got a hold of Peter and, and, and gave him the words to deliver that caused everybody to have the open heart that he could go in and prick and let them understand what they would heard and what it meant. He's, the Holy Spirit is like the powerhouse. It's like the Energizer bunny with a battery on steroids. That never, on steroids that never stops. And it's just, you, he does everything for us. Like, like Anna said, he's the comforter, he's a teacher, he's, he chastises us. Mm -hmm. you know, he allows us to be chastised. Allows us to be chastised. But, but it's it just, <laughs> that whole Acts 1 through 6 that he just read, you stop and think about it, and, and what was the final outcome of it? Thousands, three thousand got saved. got saved. In the NIV where it says prick, you know, I feel like prick, you just prick yourself. 
and the NIV it says cut to the heart. So it literally cut them, tore them up. Yep. Cut them, I mean, got to where they were just. A lot of, a lot of people refer to that as just completely broken. Exactly. Right. Completely broken. One of the one of the things, and and Les read it, and Brad said it, but my my mind this morning when I was kind of thinking about it when I was drinking my coffee, is that I thought started thinking back about the verses in John that y'all read. <clears throat> He's telling them everything. He tells us a lot we don't pay attention, but he's telling them everything. And, and I looked up this word to make sure I was using the right word. But everything that he told, the, in particular, those verses that he told his disciples came to fruition on Pentecost Day. Because he, God delivered the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, to that crowd. Now, what I like about what I read in some of the study was this. We really don't know how many people were there. There was at least 3,000 souls saved. In other verses further down the line, the, the line it says, it, and the church added, was added to daily. Daily. What I really love about it and where, I, where I, God finally kind of showed me my direction was, and it's plainly said, so last week we studied God's word is God's word. It, if he speaks to you, he will not contradict his word. Now, I understand you can look at applications. You can do anything you want to, and that, that's what I... It, the Holy Spirit comes to you as something when you need something. He could be a teacher, he could be a counselor, or he could just come to you as a comforter, okay? It just so happens, that's what John calls him. That's what it said in the book of John. He meets you in your need. He, meet, he meets you in your need where you're at. And, and let me say this. He warns me a lot of times about the stupid thing I'm fixing to do, and I do it anyway. I'm, not, I'm, I'm the only one. I know y'all don't do that. Um, but what I'm saying is, I, 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 look, I, I think of chapter, verse 6 and chapter 2, and I, and I studied a long time ago, and we went through it a while back in our Bible study. Um, in the book of Nehemiah, okay, it said that they met at the water at the water gate water gate water gate and, and daily they had like a service uh, okay and those 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 Jewish people had been scattered and gone for so long that they all didn't speak the same language <laughs> I to, this, it, and and Warren said it before so I'm not going to say it. if y'all could if, if y'all were just present in my mind on that thought what ran through my head <laughs> Here y'all. We were at Kelly's the other day. And my, li my very limited Texas slang Spanish that I can speak, I, s I used the word for little. Like little? Anybody know what that word is in Spanish? Huh? Poquito. Say again? Poquito. And, well, she corrected me and said Poquito. And I'm like, hey, you girl, you, to, you haven't been in Texas long enough. But it means just a little bit. That's all it means. But I, I, I say this to, to, for this. They had been scattered for a while. Okay? So when they came together in the courtyard by the water gate, and Ezra began to read from the Bible, do y'all remember, if y'all have ever read that, do y'all remember what was taking place out in the crowd? Anybody? There was... Translators. There you go. Hey, I like that. They're, they're Levi's priests, under shepherds, whatever you want to call them. They were amongst the people saying, hey, do you understand what he's saying? Because if you don't, let me help you. Well, Peter didn't have that that day. He, he had the Holy Spirit that did it for him. And what it plainly says is, they had been scattered for a while. And as the, as the Holy Spirit went to work on them, he allowed every, not Peter to speak in whatever, but he allowed everybody that was there to hear, hear what Peter was saying in their language. It's this, this speaking in tongues, the lesson alludes to not to a it's a gift. It, it's alluded to a lot. I think it's even in Corinthians where that that 
Let me tell you something. I am clear about that. It's not some person flopping around on the floor speaking some kind of funny language. It's not that. What it is is God allowed them to hear everything he had to say in their very own language. It could have been Japanese, Chinese, Spanish, whatever you want to call it. It wasn't. But I said this. I used to, my, a guy that worked with me when I was younger, again, <laughs> when I throw my little bit of Spanish out there, and he would go to laughing. And I, and I told him, I said, Alfred, did I say it wrong? He said, no, you didn't say it wrong. It's just a slang that you throw in there. On the floor, you know? and, and, Poor thing. He, 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 but he had, okay. thank, thank the Lord, I, he, I had him to help me because he understood proper Spanish, Tex-Mex. He also understood Cuban. And I had some of all of that. So it's, it's not hard for me anymore to teach on, mm -hmm. on Acts 2, 1 through 6. Because I'm clearly understanding that the Lord can speak to and allow anybody to do speak any way he wants to. They don't, we just don't do that much anymore. But the bottom line was, if he did, what you're going to do is he, you're going to hear him through somebody else in your own language. You had, you were trying, you were doing this, Lisa. Oh, no, I was just... <laughs> She's scratching her ear. Well, I, I Listen, in the auction, that it cost you $17. <laughs> I thought about when he said that the missionaries... Uh -huh. You know, they go out, and most likely where they go, they're not English speaking, and yet God uses them like any in India. She has to learn whatever that language is <laughs> Indian, and, but yet God used her. I well, in Psalms it says that he will call a ravenous bird or a man from a far country to do his counsel. So if he can call that, then he can do whatever he wants. I'm not, he says I will make it to pass. I'm, I'm not, well, and, and again, you, you saying that, Becky, that's, that's why I said, I'm, for me, when I looked at the lesson, I felt like that everything that Jesus was telling them, man, to get, to get them prepared about the Holy Spirit, it comes to fruition right there, because it happens. And, and here's the thing about it. There's plenty of people that heard it and their hearts were broken about it and they accepted it. There was plenty of people there that heard it like, y'all are crazy. Well, you mentioned something, something in, in the lesson about why you're drunk. Well, they, they were talking, that, that's another story for another time. Yeah. But they also, just remember, the same man that's speaking that day, that 3,000 people are saved, it's the same man they pull, pull in, front, in front of the Sanhedrin, him and John, and said they perceived them two men to be ignorant and unlearned. And you know why? Because they didn't want to accept what they were telling them. And, and, and what's even better than that, we, got, we have to go through Acts 1, through 2, 3, 4, 5, and watch myself, maybe all the way through, get to 9, the end of, eight, the end of 9, because some of the things are probably happening right there in that place that day, there's another guy standing around hearing it. Well, in the lesson it said, the distinguishing characteristic of God's voice is that his words were always called for response. You cannot remain indifferent to it. You either can reject it or obey it, but you cannot remain neutral. When Peter preached, the Holy Spirit affirmed his words to those who were listening. Okay, to that point, there was someone else listening, and you don't see that guy to about the last of eight or the first of nine, and his name's Saul. And when he, there's things being said he, they said he was, there's, there's, I've heard comments that he was the Pharisee of Pharisees, <laughs> highly educated, sit under the best teachers of that time. And they, he was one of the ones, like many others, that said, that can't be him. That cannot be the Messiah. He's supposed to come down here on his horse with a sword and start wiping out the Romans and setting us free. No, that, he didn't understand. He didn't really get in there and study the way he should have studied because it's all prophesied. <laughs> A lot of a lot of stuff that, that Peter said that day come out of Joel. Joel. So if you look at that, Paul's there. He's hearing, he's there, he's hearing. And guess what? On the road to Damascus, he got knocked off his high horse. And he understood exactly what Jesus had to say to him at that point in time. Now, yes? I, I can remember, just to put a perspective for us, is the, back when we had David Ring here. And when David Ring would start speaking, you could not understand him. But as he got in the Word... Mm -hmm. And as he started to preach, it, it became clearer and that's clearer true. to the people in the audience. So that's that's one that can put that's it in perspective for us of how the one 
ones may have been listening on that day. So. <laughs> I'm laughing because I heard him a couple times and he always talks about his sister was trying to drag him to church and said, I had to get her off my back. She was killing me. <laughs> I think about that every and, and Les is right. The first time I heard him speak was at Youth Alive. Um, and then he came to the church. It was amazing. Um, fun, day, fun days. Danny? One of the things that I got out of this, I mean, I looked, I, I always read what, they, what the fellow has to say, and I see a few points in it, but kind of, yeah. But one of the things that I got out of this, of course, this is Luke, you know, who didn't really walk with Christ. And he comes along after, and he's this really educated guy, and he talks with, I think that he's close with Mary, and I think that he's close with John. And I feel like and he's getting all this information, and he's there at this point in time. And I believe he's exposing, uh, you know, what happened. Who is he writing to? I think he's writing to the church. This is the beginning of the church. This is where Christ told everybody, hey, I'm going to give you this gift. And I believe that this is real important where he's, this is, this is, he's writing and he's, he's, he's showing everybody the, the beginning of the church, but it's first the Holy Spirit coming into that. It's where the, the group of preachers are to gather together and they're anointed with the Holy Spirit and then they're pushed out onto the people. And this is the Feast of the Pentecost. I believe that it's estimated somewhere, uh, the, Population of the city is somewhere around 70 to 80,000. Okay, but at this particular time, the population rises up to a little over 150,000 people. Right. So there's all these people that have come into the city. So they're they're everywhere. So they have this they have this event, and they're going around preaching and talking in the streets. And we're going to go meet, and we're going to have this thing. And it gives these people some release and something to go do. And these people, they're hearing these guys talk. Let's go check this out. And these people go out there. We don't have any idea how many people were out there. So 3,000, is that a lot? I mean, it's a lot, you know, seemingly, but, you know, how many were actually there? And it says later that they were added to daily. But the thing is, this is the first lesson. And, they're, and what he does is he's telling them, you killed Christ. Right. And remember what Christ is. That's not Jesus' last name. That's the Messiah. That word is Messiah. This is the Messiah that our ancestors had talked about for hundreds of years. And he gets here, and you don't believe who he is, and you kill him. And he preaches this truth to him, and he tells him, you know, when we talk about uh, someone being up there with God, that isn't David. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. He came down here, and here he is. And he's going to be up there. It says, my Lord, this Lord, talk to this Lord, and he's going to be up there. Anyway, what he, what he was saying is that's this guy. And he, he was so able to convince them by using the scriptures and showing them that who he, that this is who uh, God was talking about is Jesus Christ and not David or somebody else. That it, the Holy Spirit, through these men and through these words, convicted these people and that it moved them to be... to. Question and, the, what, and they didn't just fall down and get saved. They said, "What are we supposed to do?" They're like, "We <laughs> we killed the Son of God. What are we supposed to do?" They they didn't say, "Okay, what can we do now to fix it?" You know, should we review the law? Is there a fix in there? No, 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 no. They, they what are we supposed to do? They were scared, and he told them, "Be saved, get baptized, go to work for God." And, and, and so they did. So there were 3,000 people added to the church through baptism. Let's make that clear. They didn't need that to be saved. But that was just the beginning. And this is the beginning of the church. And I think that's real important. And we look at what this really is. This was the start. I um, just had to. <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately, we're time limited. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, why don't you close the prayer? Grace, Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity to come in and learn more about your word, to have these discussions and, and to get a better understanding of, of just exactly what you want us to hear, to open our hearts and hear the words that you want us to hear. Father, be with the, the pastor today as he delivers your message. 
you use his mouth to say the words that you want to hear that hopefully that if there's anybody in the service that does not know you that that he'll say something today that will prick their hearts and open them up to want to know more about you be with us as we go forward today lord and all this we thank you amen, amen. Oh, I enjoy